All right, good day, hi, and welcome. Okay, part two here. So uh, this is the Allen keys that came along with uh, with the uh, the Ibanez Geo here. So I can imagine this big one. I don't think that, that's pretty small for a truss rod one. Uh, maybe I have a bunch of truss rod wrenches from other guitars. They're usually pretty generic. Not all of them, but uh, most of them. But anyway, yeah, so you get that, so you can do your adjustments. Uh, where did I finish up? I finished up, uh, yeah, the, you know, uh, recommending um, for a beginner bass player. Now, if you're like me, like most bass players probably are guitar player gone bass player. And again, I, I don't know if I'll be doing any gigs with this, but this is an ideal gigging instrument. So like, if something really bad happens, I'll give you an idea, this would be a gigging instrument to beat up in the bars and that uh way down there that uh js32 jackson is kind of like my gigging instruments these are like my prestige guitars the eight string the seven string holcomb which is awesome uh and of course the the the, the savagely insane uh, jackson r5t and of course my gibson incredible gibson sg61 reissue and then of course the sg3 what a gem that one is and then my two kind of half dilapidated acoustic guitars tac mine and um, and an Ibanez as well. So my first professional guitar was an Ibanez, Ibanez RG750, which got stolen. Yes, I'm still bitter about it to this day. Uh, and then, uh, I always wanted to get a bass. And I remember a friend of mine getting into bass and I talked him into buying a five string bass. And, uh, this is back, back in my rock and roll dig days back in the nineties. And he got the bass, and he never played before, but uh, bass before. But uh, he'd been, you know, hanging, he hang around me. I'm a musician, right? I do the musician thing. So uh, between myself and his cousin getting into the guitar, I was showing his cousin some guitar stuff. So we ended up jamming all the time, and then we pulled him in, and I showed him some stuff on the bass just to get him going. I don't know if he still plays or whatever, uh, but he started out on the five string, and he he liked it. Uh, the reason why we went five string is just, you got that, that, that low B just gives you that. It, it, it's a really cool ball. You know what I mean? Now let's say you just can't get away with the five string and you have to go four string because your hands are too small or whatever. Uh, and we're going to talk about the scale length in a second. Um, you could do what they call Nashville tuning, where you actually tune your E to the B and you tune, you, you tune everything one, you know, one fourth down. Uh, if you're going this way, one fifth up, if you're going that way, one fourth down, if you're going that way. So in other words, your, your, uh, G string, okay, becomes your D string, your D string becomes your A string, your A string becomes your, uh, E, your E becomes a B. Uh, so you, it's like having this as a four string. And I see a lot of people do that, but then you lose out on your highs. So it depends. There's always cheat codes, right? And then, of course, you'd have to re-intonate and set up your guitar, uh, bass guitar for that. If the bridge allows for that much of adjustment. That said, or you could just buy a five string and get best of both worlds. Uh, if you're a slap bass player, again, this will be the more difficult way you can do it. But it's the more difficult way to do it because the spacing is a lot, uh, you know, a couple of millimeters difference. So, I mean, this neck is probably about the same space as a, a width of as a normal four string, maybe a little bit. It's a, probably a tad bit wider, but uh, if you had four strings spaced out on this fingerboard versus the five, right? That's where you're, you know, that's going to make a big difference in how you play. Um, yeah, so for a very beginner with no musical friends whatsoever, and you've never played before, maybe go with the, the four string. Uh, this is not the base model for the Ibanezes. This is like one up from the base model. The base model has one pickup, and I think is uh, I think they uh, they offer it in both uh, four and five string, and I think it was like sixty bucks cheaper. Pay the extra sixty bucks, get the two pickups. The pickups are not bad. They're not great. Like you're not going to get thunder. You're not you know out of this. The fat switch thing uh, this year is kind of cool. Uh, again, I will do some sound demos in a, in a you know, uh, in my recording, I'm going to be doing some recording a little bit later today uh, with this. And so you can get an idea of what kind of sounds you're going to get out of this bass. Uh, 
for a guitar player gone bass player kind of thing uh this will cover your needs on a basic level for just about any sort of style of playing you can think of but again you're dealing with that extra low string so your playing technique is going to have to start off right away uh, i'm trying the the uh, floating thumb technique to uh, mute my strings uh string muting is a, like when you're playing in your room or even through a bass amp i don't have i've got guitar amps all over the place as you can see i don't have any bass amps but uh that plugs right into the uh BR 1200 here like all my other instruments and of course with that it has like all kinds of amp simulators and bass simulator and all that so I can do can do that uh, but the thing is is that um, sonically right you you've got a lot of tonalities that you can get high low and stuff like that and we'll talk about that in the next video but the scale this is where this is what the, the catch 22 is with a bass a bass four string or never mind the five string but even a four string the easiest instrument you could probably play is a four string bass there's probably no uh maybe a ukulele is easier technically uh but the four string bass is about as easy as it, if you want to get somebody into an instrument who doesn't have a musical bone in the body bass is the way to go now that said bass can get very sophisticated and complicated and there's some players that just blow your mind how good they actually are steve harris billy sheenan uh some of these funk guys uh doing the slap bass thing because the bass you must slap it you must slap it all the time <laughs> davy 504 types right and those guys they play with a skill level above the average bass player the average bass player is a guitar player using a pick all night. Uh, but even at that, it's a it's a more fatiguing instrument because of the thicker strings. But what gets you is the scale. So my Gibsons over there, sorry, the mess of the room, are 24 and 3 quarter scale. I'm not sure what the acoustic guitars are. They're probably even shorter than that. And my, uh, the Jacksons there are 25 and a half. The uh, LTD and the uh, PRS here are 26 and a half inch scale length. So if you take... 34 inch scale length and then you know do your difference you're like between uh what is it uh let's see 26 and a half so that'll be eight uh, seven and a half to nine and a quarter inches difference in length meaning if you're going from the bridge your guitar is going to end around here right now you got to drop your arm all the way down here which is really long and you you know your bridge is all the way over here so your hand one hand is here and the other hand if it has to go down there uh you, you, you're doing this right and that's that's what's hard for bass players uh when they're learning is getting being able to play relaxed because they're you're doing this right and it's very fatiguing and if it's a really heavy bass uh that's that's also makes it harder for learning uh one little note there on the i love this store i've never been in it uh but the service they give i i, I give them a shout out because they uh they uh they every time i order something from them it comes well set up um and they it's like the day i order it to the time it gets here uh 400 600 kilometers about four to say 250 to 400 miles range whatever it is between here and there four days every time uh never never a problem and they're really helpful so the arts music store give them a check out you can order stuff online from them and everything like that they're, they're fantastic uh this is the third instrument i've bought from them um you know plus when they have stuff in stock that other stores don't that, that and uh, they're shipping over a certain uh certain uh certain uh price range i forget how much it is there but uh, the the shipping's free so that's pretty good now, i don't know about going cross border but there you go so anyway yeah so the scale length is the big thing that gets bass players so uh an extra string plus the scale length uh even though the bass is easier to play per se on the basic level uh it's more complicated to play on the, the sophisticated level because of that scale length so going from an extended range guitar at 26 and a half like my eight string guitar that's still easier to play than the bass uh when you're doing complicated stuff 
and you know you you will notice it so that's that's some of the things i've noticed so again for me it's mainly a recording instrument uh, i'm hoping to do some gigs uh this year and if i can't get out there with the acoustic uh maybe i can get out there with the bass if i can't get out there with the guitar it's really hard to join bands but if you're a bass player the bands will find you trust me uh for like i said in the last video for every one bass player there's probably about 5,000 guitar players so you can see how you're gonna probably have an easier time uh, with the bass and the bass is an actual depend it, it is what you make of it it's either the most boring instrument or it could be very very exciting and challenging like any instrument it all depends on what you do uh, people buy acoustic guitars and they never leave past never go past the fifth fret uh, people buy basses they never go past the seventh fret you know and they play with a pick all the time yeah that's kind of boring do 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 you know what I mean uh, me I'm all over the place right from day one um, so I would not call myself a, a, a hardcore bass player and you know like I'm gonna have to work probably play this for about a month or so before I can play a three-hour gig with it because that will fatigue you um, that's the thing about the thicker strings is uh, you have to protect your hands uh, so that if you start feeling any burning in your fingers your hands my fingers you know like again I I, I already got some dexterity there from playing guitar and finger tapping stuff like that but building up that extra strength from these thicker strings it's going to take a little while and if your hand starts burning you have to you have to stop because you're going to give yourself carpal tunnel you're going to get you know tendonitis carpal tunnel all that stuff uh you don't want to do that so so far i can play this bass for you know about a half an hour or 45 minutes without any sort of burning feelings in my hands or anything like that uh same with the extended range stuff and i shred all the time so i, I, I you got to learn how to play relaxed any instrument that there is but when you get the heavier strings you, you really have to learn how to play relaxed so the cheat code of the pick and the bass is just do 